couple days after Aiden was born, he started turning jaundice. We were told by his pediatrician at the time that everything was okay and that it was nothing to worry about. I think deep down we knew something was wrong. Most babies start a little yellow at the beginning until somebody mentioned to them that he might have biliary atresia. They came here kind of prepared and knowing that this is maybe what he could have. Then everybody came the first day of the visit. It was uh, parents and grandparents in the office and asking the right questions and, you know, they were nervous. I've been a diabetic for 25 years. Originally started off with type two and switched over several years later to type one. It was two weeks after returning from my honeymoon that I was told I had to start dialysis. On the honeymoon, I had swollen legs, limbs, you know, I looked like the Michelin man walking around. It was, it was horrific. Honestly, after my first week of being on dialysis, I, I knew I couldn't live that way. You're seeing the world go by you at, at crazy speeds. We were just stagnant and had nothing to talk about except doctor visits and hospital visits. I gave her a kidney pancreas transplant. Because of her diabetes, her kidneys had failed, so she subsequently needed both organs to increase not only the quality of her life, but the longevity of her life. She received actually our first long distance ship in pancreas transplant. It came from Tennessee. We now know how to do transplantation reliably. The advances in surgery, anesthesia, critical care have made it possible to replace a heart, lungs, livers, in critically ill people and get them through the operation. The patient's receptiveness to the organ immediately after the transplant can play into some of the complications later. If they have an acute rejection episode, we often increase the immunosuppressive medications, and that can increase their risk for infections. So patients that actually have rejection sometimes are set up to have other complications as well. Instead of broadly suppressing the immune system to uh, prevent rejection, we would like to re-educate it. So we want to teach it to see the donor itself. If you could re-educate the immune system like that, you don't need immunosuppressive drugs to prevent the rejection. Everything went beautifully. The pancreas was perfect. She's not really had a hiccup since. Immediately in the operating room, was no longer a diabetic, was no longer a renal failure patient. I cannot speak highly enough of, of Casey. She's a phenomenal human being. I remember thinking all this before the transplant and then after the transplant, my respect and admiration for her has just grown, you know, tenfold. Not just because I look at her as someone who saved my life. Her charisma, her caring, her knowledge is enormous. I adore her, best, best way put, simply put, yeah, adore her. From our first visit with Dr. Martinez, my, my main concern was, will he be okay? Whatever we have to do, we'll do it. Will he be okay? And will he have a normal life? She promised us that he would be okay. And we went through the process of evaluating him, and he turned out to have biliary atresia. Then he got an infection in his liver. And we told them that the best option for him at that point was to get a liver transplant, and his father immediately stepped up and said, I'm doing it. I remember walking into the OR knowing that, knowing that the most important thing I'm going to do in my life, I'm going to do today. You know, the next day, um, they actually got me uh, into a wheelchair and brought me over to see him. It was a uh, you know, very emotional, right? You know, you're looking at your son, and you know he was very much you know, plugged in, but you can see that he was strong. Um, you know, he was resting comfortably. The transplant forum is one of the most gratifying developments in my career because it, it reflected the contributions of a group of families who were all touched by transplantation in different ways and who wanted to give back to Columbia University. And it allows for us to support other patients going through the process, to support our doctors. One of the most amazing things about Columbia and about PNS is the collaborative nature of the teaching, the learning, the instruction, uh, the research. You always feel like every brain is being plumbed for any bit of information, bold, brilliant, creative ideas, because that's how science is furthered. The life he has right now, you know, is the life that we expected him to have the day he was born. We couldn't be more grateful to 
I mean, frankly, talk to Martinez and her staff. He has no idea he had a liver transplant. It does not affect him one bit. He does everything every other kid does. We wanted to, to say thank you. How do we thank Dr. Martinez? How do we thank the doctors that saved his life? So we committed to become very involved with the transplant forum at Columbia and really just give back. Life after transplant has been a walking dream. To this day, I don't feel like it's real. This is the place that you come when nothing else works anywhere else. They find solutions and they back you up 24-7. I would never go anywhere else.